There are many numerous species of scorpions out the world, as well as arachnids. They inhabit every continent except for Antarctica. Extremely common, and they really cool. Scorpions are a good example of a cheap, inexpensive pet because they're a cheap, exotic pet because they're relatively cheap. They cost up to eight dollars, pretty much. It's that the highest pridings of them I've seen are thirty dollars, but that's outrageous. I mean, usually they're around eight dollars. Highest thirty, but they're pretty relatively cheap. Um, Emperor scorpions are actually native to the rainforest of Asia, which is why the sand setting in his cage, desert setting, isn't the most logical. But the guy, the see, people in the pet stores don't always know a lot about scorpions. They're not ex emperor scorpions aren't really desert animals. They're more of giant rainforest scorpions. Desert scorpions, the ones native to the Sahara Desert, are smaller and lighter colored, like white or yellow. The big black emperor scorpions native to the rainforest of Asia and those such regions. It's obviously one of the biggest scorpions. It's not the biggest. It's still relatively. Obviously, judging by its large size, you can tell. That it's not poisonous. Well, not as poisonous as smaller ones. Typically, and this isn't always true, this is more of a stereotype, but the smaller scorpions are the more poisonous, and the larger they are, the less poisonous they are. It's a stereotype. It's not always true in all cases, but for the emperor scorpion is. Um, he's not really that poisonous. I mean, I have seen ones that have their stingers cut off, but... Their stingers will grow back, because if you've ever had hermit crabs or any sort of arthropod, you would know that once they lose legs or something, unless they're like a cricket or something, they usually grow their limbs and legs back really fast. Like, for example, if this scorpion got in the fight with another emperor scorpion, and he lost his arm, um, well, he would eat it, which is why you rarely ever see them. You do occasionally, but they eat them pretty fastly. And then he would grow back a new one, same thing with a stinger. Stinger would grow back. He's not really poisonous unless you're allergic to bees because he happens to be three times more powerful than a bee sting. So if you're allergic to bees, that could be a big threat. But if you're not, then it just hurts really bad, but you're not going to go to the hospital or anything. Of course, if you are allergic to bees, then you probably will. That's like three bee stings. But, see if you notice there, they mainly feed on crickets. You can feed them small mice. When they get older, you can feed them small mice, but this guy's an adult and eats crickets, which you don't have to feed them small mice if you're sensitive about that, because they'll eat crickets fine. And if you want to kill uh, bugs, well, I mean, then you really shouldn't get a scorpion, because they're not, well, I mean, they could potentially um, eat certain non-meat things, but they're naturalized meat. However, but don't give them fruits because really that's just this guy regular scorpions probably won't eat anything except for crickets so just to forget i said that they pretty much only eat meat they're not really on the worst but they're really they're not they're really cool but actually see one thing i like about them is their pinchers trying to remind me of hands like how we pick up stuff with our hands to eat they pick up stuff with their pinchers to eat just like us so they pick up stuff with their pinchers and put it in their mouth like we pick up stuff with our hands in their mouth. Now they usually, based on what I've observed, emperor scorpions, I don't know about other scorpions, but emperor scorpions won't necessarily chase after their prey as much as opposed to hiding in a dark shelter. See if you have a shelter like this, 
What you see is his, if you see Cricket walk by, his pinchers will stick out of the opening and then they'll just reach out as fast as the lightning and grab it. Screw it. Setting, what you hear there's sand, you should not do that. I don't care if the pet store people say to put sand there. Um, if it's an adverse scorpion, what you do want to do is put mulch. Mulch is more susceptible. Because if you keep sand, an adverse scorpion will dry out, which he'll still be okay and stuff. But if you don't change his hand, he won't eat. I'm not sure why, but if I don't change his stand, he won't eat. Then after I change it, Also, scorpions don't require very much food. They need to be fed maybe twice a week or so because they're, as you know, desert animals. Of course, even though these guys are rainforest animals still. And you can see that white stuff there. That's their poop. They don't produce pee. They produce solid poop like a leopard gecko. And pretty much if you're familiar on caring for leopard geckos, it's about the same. If not, I don't know, slightly more simple for a... Uh, for, uh, Scorpion. Now, it's not exactly like caring for tarantulas. Tarantulas are different. It's more like caring for a leopard gecko. Um, these guys are pretty big. This is an adult male emperor scorpion. Um, he's about a few years old, and I've had him for a while. Now, his name is Akhenaten, named after the ancient Egyptian Pharaoh Akhenaten, father of the king Tutankhamen, as you know, Egyptian history. Um, now, we know that he's not native to ancient Egypt, but I just thought that Matt's his person. <laughs> he's a really good scorpion. But one thing I do know, see those tracks are made by scorpion marks. One thing I do know is you shouldn't try to hold him with your hands, although some people do. Because number one, he has pinchers, which he can pinch you with, so it's like trying to pick up a crab. Although if you hold a crab, the, there's actually a technique for holding a crab without pinching it. You would turn it upside down and rub it on its belly, but that doesn't work for scorpions. Now, scorpions actually are related to crustaceans, but they're in the sense that they're arthropods. Because insects, arachnids, which include scorpions and crustaceans, are all in the same family, believe it or not are arthropods, which basically means they have exoskeletons. I mean, if you look at them, you can tell. Um, Akhenaten and Scorpion, you saw the evolutionary link between crustaceans and arachnids. But scorpions are old. They've been around since the Cambrian, although the, one of the oldest fossilized records has been around the Jurassic. But scorpions have actually been around earlier than that. They've been around in the Cambrian. As you all know, Plumo Scorpius is a giant... 12 meter long scorpion and these guys are pretty cool as active during winter now technically scorpions are nocturnal noises but nocturnal animals but they won't make any sounds at night they're not like a hamster or something but if you keep the mulch or sand really soft, that means you clean it regularly, they won't make a sound at all when they go hunting. Well, you will be able to hear them, but it will just be soft, and you'll probably be able to sleep through it. So you don't have to worry about You can keep them in your room. And handling a scorpion, I wouldn't recommend doing that with your bare flesh. Because they do have pinchers and a stinger, and if you're allergic to bees, I wouldn't recommend that. So, if you don't have special leather gloves or anything for handling animals, you could use an oven mitt as a substitute, a rubber-thick oven mitt. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be rubber, it could be made out of cloth, it doesn't really matter. But oven mitts are the recommended thing I would suggest for having holding handling scorpions, because they work really well. And you don't want to squeeze it, because obviously the scorpion's your friend, I mean... You want to make them come here, but the stingers, when they're out like this, indicates that they're angry. When they're just folded back like this, it doesn't mean he's going to strike you. When it's parallel to the ground, that just indicates sort of like he's stretching, and then they'll usually go into a water supply. Because even though they're commonly found in deserts, you need a water supply for them. And they'll take a bath, so that's what means happens if its tail is stretched. Or it just means, that just means that they're in a non-hunting state. Although I have seen them hunt like this, but it means they're in a non-hunting state, and it's sort of like a relaxation thing. Like, it's what they do at night 
when everyone's asleep and they just go out. During the day, they like to stay in shelters like this. And scorpions can pretty much communicate to you with their pinchers and their um and their uh, tails. If they try to strike you with your tail, that really means they're angry. And if their tail's like this, but their pincher, which is located, but their stinger, which is located on the tip of the tail, is curved down, so it's like this. They're just a little agitated, but not really. But if it's like this, which I have never seen my scorpion's tail like before, because you would have to really agitate it to do that, that means he wants to strike. But I've never actually seen one strike, because these guys aren't really as aggressive as scorpions. Those smaller scorpions, the lighter colored ones that are found, desert scorpions, they're found in the Sahara Desert. Now, those ones are aggressive, but... And emperor scorpions may sting or pinch you, but trust me, they're not as aggressive as the smaller ones. I mean, they're pretty good pets, but they do have pinchers and they'll pinch you, so there's that, but they're not as aggressive as stereotypical.